the last seven years of female college basketball has been the most insane skyrocketing of publicity and public interest. I know people who don't watch basketball, who only watch now women's college basketball. March Madness, like crazy. crazy this last year. What yeah. was what what has that been like for you to be in the center of that universe as it's dude, I'm sure if they're not making a Netflix special, they're thinking about it, which they probably yeah, they have already to. done. What has that been like for you to see call like women's college basketball from what would be considered kind of like a, a gradual and then all at once? Like you have a front row seat to the best in the nation. Like that must be is it are you too close to it? Can you see it? Can you sit back sometimes and be like, holy well, I think fuck, like this yeah, like the biggest difference is like before there'd be like one women's game on like 10 years ago, it'd be like if UConn and Tennessee were playing, that game would be on ESPN and there wouldn't be any other televised games on major networks at all. So like people can't see it. And throughout Title IX and viewership, like they're slowly starting to put more games on. And I think it's one of those things like once people watch a game – then they're like, okay, I get it. This is fun. There's really good athletes. They're good at basketball. Like I have a group of buddies down here and they weren't women's basketball fans before. And they came to you know, a game to support me. And they're like, yo, do you have tickets for the next one? Like we want to keep coming. Like these are fun. And I think when I mean, you give them the stage of like showing like these are world-class athletes playing basketball. Like if you appreciate the game and being competitive and all this stuff, like you'll love women's basketball. I think the problem is people just like compare it to men's and it's like well, that's a stupid comparison like you don't compare any other sport like oh the these women's couldn't even make a high school men's team or whatever and you're like that's not the point of this situation at all it's like they're really good athletes they play at a high level and they know the game i think people just don't view women as like hyper competitive they just put them in this box of like oh they're women whatever but like these are some junkyard dogs out there playing back and forth and i think this was the first year in the tournament where people saw like, yo, know, these players get out of, get after. I mean, there's a fight in one of the games. Like, I don't know. I love it. I think it's cool. Now, when you came in, you know, you already said right away, like, you know, you're walking into a fucking like a snake pit, you know, you got to be like dialed. You have to perform. And that was seven years ago. How has the pressure changed? How have you dealt with the pressure of just being, in a program that just breeds excellence in a school that breeds excellence in a, in a program that continues to do well, like, do you, do your coping mechanisms improve as the pressure increases or has it been more difficult or easier? Like, dude, I think of jobs I don't want and your, yours is like really, really <laughs> at the top. Of the <laughs> I think the cool thing is like, it gives me purpose to like, you know, some people are like, well, what's the point? Like, you know, like we don't impact the game that much. Like, but like here, it's like you impact the game a lot. And I think the better you get, and I saw this at Kansas men's basketball, like in winning is so ingrained in the culture. Like if you're one of the athletes that isn't about like doing extra every day, you know, going hard, like you're going to be kind of weeded out. And so it's like, you kind of get these certain type of athletes and coaches. Like the only thing on their mind is like that 1% every day. And if you're not like about that, then like you're the oddball and it's more of like, well, if you're not doing this extra stuff and these kids want to get better, like, what are you doing here? Like, we don't have a place for you. And so I think it's cool to work with, and you know, good as I do, like those elite athletes, like they want to work on that 1% every single day. There's no like, Hey, you could take today off. They're like, no, we can do something. And so it's been, it's been fun. Like I love that high pressure situation that like everybody wants to win. Like, I think a lot of schools, they just, talk about winning like oh, it'd be great to win a national championship but there's a difference between talking and then doing and and the doing is the most fun thing what you you guys have such just from a technical perspective such an interesting load management issue the, the oh, yeah. month of march no other sport owns a month that is no. so crazy. You know what that is? That's the equivalent of like dating a chick. It's like, it's my birthday week. Like that's an insane thing for a human being to say. Twice and a week college for football, every month. Every yeah. single, <laughs> right. Every single like, nope, it's our month now. You're like, what the fuck is all of March? I literally turn on any, any bracket shit. March 1 hits like, oh no, it started. How do you manage? I want to know technical and tactical because like, you know, I've, I've seen Corey through it. 
I, I've uh, a handful of Ramsey, Jayhawks. Like I've seen guys go through the college basketball from a strength coach perspective. Like, what is your preparation? How do you deal with the pressure of that tournament, especially as you, you know, find yeah, yourself think, still playing ball at the end of March? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is like, okay, throughout the season, you're averaging like two, two and a half games per week. And so it's, I don't know, it's a double-edged sword of like you have to get stuff done in practice, but also like you need to have gas at the end of the season. And so it's really important to like the whole recovery, like the best recovery protocol is an intelligently designed practice, practice week, practice month. So like we sit down with the coaches and athletes and kind of give them an idea of like, here's where we should be peaking. Here's where it's fine to, you should be tired. Like we call them like the dog days of like December and January. Like you're playing the same conference opponent twice. You've been on the road, like it sucks. Um, and it's basically like brave the storm. So when March hits, like you're ready to go. And if anyone's seen like our off season and preseason, like conditioning and practice, like you'll understand why we're ready to go in March. Um, but the biggest thing is like managing those loads throughout the week. And it's tough. Cause like you're playing, you know, top 25 teams week in and week out. So there's not like a game where you can be like, Hey, let's rest these guys. Like in the NBA, there's like certain games where you rest people. Like you can't really do that in college. Um, so it's like managing all those little pieces. You can control everything from like food, hydration, sleep, but like the biggest block is practice. So if you don't have a plan or vision for what the practice week should look like, you're kind of just practice under practice. Now walk me through the month this year. Like you guys had the biggest, like, where's your head at every game? Are you like, can you, can you, I can't even watch some of the games, dude. I struggle to watch some of the games knowing you peripherally through Schles and following you on Instagram. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, dude. I'm stressing out right now. Yeah. We're kind of a nervous wreck during like conference time. <laughs> like when it's conference tournament and everything, it's like, doesn't matter how, like just win the game. doesn't matter if we win by one point or 20, doesn't matter. And then like the second you get done with a game, it's like, hooray, high fives. What, what do we have to do next? Like when's our next opponent? Who do we play? what all needs to happen in this week. And it's, you, you just need the players to understand, like there's no redos at this time of the year. Like you'll be done in the first round if you're not ready to roll and you'll be watching the tournament from your couch. And that's the last place I want to watch March Madness. But then win after win, like you know, the conversation, how when going into the tournament, how confident are you that you guys are going to walk away with it? Um, like the first couple rounds, like the, the way, like every day we practice, if you go in our gym, you'd think it was, we're practicing, like it's the national championship that day. So like everything we do is like, there's a competition to every single drill. There's no just drill where it's like, all right, layup lines. It's like, no, there has to be this many layups in this amount of time. If you drop the ball, we start like all this stuff. And I think if you create that competitive environment every day where you're like on edge, and when you finally get to a game, you're like, yo, we did this all the last six months. Like, this is just another game. Um, but it's just kind of managing, you know, having more of an experienced group helps. If you have young players, like they're in front of 15, 20,000 people and they're just all wide eyed, um, not really ready to go. And so it helps when you have players that have been there before. <laughs> 